did. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, that's an interesting little story there. It seems like trouble is getting smarter than uh, you know, smarter every day here. Um, he's getting smarter every day. You know, it's like we had to use the treats to entice them into the bedroom so that they would stay uh, out of uh, out of trouble here. And uh, so uh, Mobley came right in, of course, but uh, it seems like that even with the treats, Trouble just sat at the doorway and he looked at me suspiciously. It's like he knows, oh, I know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Even so, he still fell for his addiction. He finally succumbed and came in and I was able to uh, keep him in the bedroom, so. <laughs> Mm, this is awfully suspect, yeah. but I do love those treats. <laughs> what do I do? Hi there. Welcome once again, everybody, to Cast Iron Wednesday, where, as you know, every Wednesday, a whole bunch of uh, YouTube channels uh, get together and do their own uh, little uh, videos about uh, cooking in cast iron, and that's what we are here for tonight as well. Um and I'm always uh, pleased, you know, when uh, people actually show up to watch these things. So that's all very pleasant. I mean, hello, for instance, to um, DJC53. Well, I heard, certainly hope it's an interesting night. So hello, uh, Jessica T. Welcome back, as always, to, uh, you know, to another Wednesday night here. Um, and... Yeah, and I'm sure folks, oh, and oh, and people are showing up here. We've got uh, John, Nathan, Prepper, and of course, Papa Dan. Hi, Hi. everyone. Hi, Una everybody. Hi, yeah. Papa Dan. Yeah. Unable to attend at hospital. Dad, dad just came out of surgery. Talk to you all next week. Well, Papa Dan? Yeah, his, oh. his dad. So. I hope he's, I hope he's well, we hope he's doing, okay? yeah, I hope he came out okay and everything. So, yeah, yeah, best wishes. Obviously, that is far more important, yeah. But nonetheless, though, as well, hello again, Bookworm73 and William Hertz, who says, uh, I sometimes wish that you had accepted that field skillet. Oh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. But, um, well, that was uh, my decision back then, you know, it's not like I've had another uh, opportunity to receive a free field skillet, but so it goes. Um, the reason why, of course, was because, you know, I've got a decent cast iron collection as it is. Even so, I was intrigued enough uh, by two uh, particular uh, modern day cast iron pans that I did actually accept them and I did but uh, unboxing reviews, as you know, and that's what the title of this video is, namely Stargazer and uh, the Lodge Blacklock Skillet. And quite frankly, regarding the uh, modern day uh, cast iron pans that we're seeing these days, um, it's really hard to think of something more different uh, than the two. When you consider uh, there's a whole lot of history behind both of them, and both of them are indeed completely different. I mean, for one, of course, Lodge Cast Iron has been making uh, their pans for uh, over 120 years. This is their 125th anniversary. They produced a lot of different cast iron pans over the over that uh, past century and a quarter. On the other hand, as, and as Stargazer will certainly tell you, and no, I'm not trying to be sarcastic there, but as you know, uh, the founder of Stargazer was a guy who uh, got it into his head to uh, really design what he felt to be a superior cast iron pan uh, based on taking a lot of the lessons from uh, the old days and trying to apply them to a uh, new modern day technology. And, that, and so the result was the uh, field skillet, which of course is one of a number of new modern day uh, cast iron pans that are that uh, are available to everyone. So there are a lot of interesting made in the USA cast iron pans being made. And uh, both of these are have similarities and yet both of them are quite different. So what do we have right now? Uh, Red Dog. I can't believe I sit around and watch people cook things and try um, okay, well, I'm well, I'm glad you like it. Talk about frying pans, yes, I know. And hello, Fluffy Otter One and uh, jo and Jacob George and Fluffy Otter One. Oh, yeah, definitely Papa Dan wishing you a speedy recovery or wishing your dad a speedy recovery. So, yeah, I'd like a modern skillet that's uh lighter than my lodge, and there are indeed uh options there for that. So, uh, I might as well uh change the uh view around here so. Here comes a little roller coaster, but it'll be quick this time. Yeah. 
but not to worry because Stop the cover. Yes, because I've done my best here to uh, try to uh, get fair and even view of both of these pads. And of course, this is fine. Move this over a bit. I was able to do it last time. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, we've got a pretty good view right now. Let's move this down into center. Thank you again for your patience, everyone. There we go. So, yes, indeed. Here we are. <clears throat> Here we are tonight, folks, uh, showing you the Stargazer uh, cast iron skillet and the Lodge Black Clock cast iron skillet. Um, neither of these are brand new either. I'd wanted to do a follow up, especially because, you know, a lot of people are doing those unboxing videos these days in which they take, and I've done a few of them myself, in which they take a uh, cast iron pan out of the box, cook some with it, and then declare how it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I'll be fair. That's easy to do because, you know, cast iron is terrific for cooking. I mean, that's why I got so hooked on this hobby because, yeah, I definitely fell in love with cast iron. And whether it is a cheap uh, modern day Asian made cast iron or rare vintage cast iron or the new expensive modern day cast iron, all of it is really, quite frankly, excellent for cooking and just about all of those unboxing videos have uh, have said as much there are of course differences between the two and i had wanted to and one second uh, what's up jamie oh you need a couple of people towels okay yeah all still in common um what else do they have in common all cast iron. well yes they are, they are all cast iron <laughs> but oh, yeah Full jokes, guys. Full yeah jokes. <laughs> i'm here for the common <clears throat> entertainment yeah but um, not, yeah, nonetheless, I mean, I did want to take another look at uh, both of these pans. Uh, at least a year to almost. Oh, he. Oh, he's out here. Oh, he managed to sneak out. Yeah. Oh, you better believe it. Yeah. He was so suspicious, wasn't he? So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, a couple. Anyway, a, as I mentioned already, it's been uh, a little more than a year, maybe a year and uh, three months or so since I started using the Stargazer uh, cast iron skillet. And on the other hand, it has been almost two years since I stopped. Whoops. Yeah, be careful there. It's been almost two years since I started using the Blacklock cast iron skillet. And uh, both of them I have enjoyed using and I do and I do not regret uh, either of them. I mean, although both of them have advantages and both of them have disadvantages. Uh, one thing I've learned really over the past uh, year and a half or so is that, quite frankly, both of these do have something of a seasoning problem. I mean, if you'll notice, this, this uh, Stargazer skillet, even after uh, almost two years of use, has not really become fully black like you see on the uh, great vintage cast iron pans. On the other hand, it is definitely taking on a patina of its own. Um, when I first started uh, cooking with this, yeah, really, the seasoning uh, came off pretty quickly. And furthermore, a lot of people who talk about the uh, cast irons, um, about the Stargazer pan and who have also used it, have all said the same thing, that really it has some difficulty with the seasoning. It's quite frankly so glass smooth on the surface that it's actually difficult to season, and it does indeed take some effort. However, over time, it has definitely started to uh, develop some uh, actual seasoning of its own, and in no time at all has it ever lost that really, really smooth uh, exterior there. So, as you can see, even uh, from the back here, it's uh, taking on a nice color as well. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the uh, probably disadvantages of the uh, Stargazer that they talk about. I mean, I mean, it has some definite real advantages here in that I've been heating this thing for about 20 minutes or so, and it's still not, um, unfortunately, it's still too hot to be able to uh, grip even on this uh, long handle here. So while it does indeed have a handle that reduces heat, I would say long-term cooking, you will still need a... Um, you will still need to uh, use a glove or something when holding it. Uh, of course, it does have the advantage of the very big helper handle as well as the very long handle here. And quite frankly, I have enjoyed that. It's also much heavier 
uh, well, not much. It's more than a pound heavier than the uh, Black Lock skillet as well. So, um, on the other hand, again, the uh, Black, the uh, Stargazer, as uh, one of its uh, most prominent features, of course, is is the lipped. Uh, rim all around. It does not have any pore spouts, and instead it uses, um, it has the, uh, again, the uh, ring, the uh, circular or the uh, ri the lipped rim so that you can pour, at it, uh, pour it from any angle. And they have really done their best to try to make a selling point of that. I mean, that's the thing with Stargazer in particular. I mean, they uh, almost two years in. If you look on Stargazer's website, you can see that they have all of two cast iron pans for sale: the ten-inch pan and the twelve-inch pan. They also have a couple of T-shirts for sale as well. So they are definitely specializing, and uh, I can only hope that their business is doing well. That uh, you know that they can continue producing these. Um, one thing as well that I've regretted really from the day I started cooking with this, and, and by the way, I think I'll start cooking uh, right immediately in a couple of minutes or so so that we don't just sit here and watch these pans. Uh, one thing I've regretted pretty much from the day I got this, unfortunately, is that this pan still does not have a lid available. Uh, the shape of the pan with the uh, rimmed lid and all that means it is not quite exactly the same as a generic cast iron pan in that a large lid, for instance, let me get this right here. Oh, sorry about that. Here is a uh, large uh, skillet lid, you know, from their uh, combo cooker here. It does not fit exactly on the uh, Stargazer pan. It fits pretty good, but it's, uh, again, it's not a tight Fit. It's not an exact fit here. On the other hand, if we were to take this and put it on the large black lock, hold on, um, let's see if I can do this without burning myself. Ugh. There we go. There we go. It sits on the black lock, uh, of course. Uh, really, look at that. It sits uh, almost perfectly because, of course, it's a lodge pan. So they designed it to uh, their specifications. So that actually means the diameter of the lodge pan is probably, ooh, hot. Okay, time for that. Where did that glove go? Here it is. The diameter of the lodge pan is maybe a tiny fraction of an inch bigger than the uh, black lock skillet. But, of course, you know, that's really not important where cooking is concerned. On the other hand, having a lid that fits is a matter of concern. And that's why I experimented and found, just by coincidence, uh, this, on the other hand, is the lid to a Wagner Magnolite Aluminum uh, Dutch Oven. Um, a 10-inch Dutch Oven, yes, but it's not quite the same because for this, the, pa the uh, pan fits on top of the uh, Stargazer almost perfectly. So as such, if you have a stargazer and you really need a lid for it, and I think you do, uh, the best I could say for that is to start looking through thrift stores. You can probably find uh, <clears throat> a glass lid that will, in fact, fit nicely, or even a metal lid on top of the stargazer. I'm not sure if it's fair to call that a disadvantage. I mean, after all, again, they're a small company, and they have only then they have still um, only been in business for two years, as opposed to over a hundred years for a lodge. Nonetheless, it's still um, something to uh, think about. And what else do we have here? I have a star uh, Art Aronson. I have a stargazer and field and lodge. So. <laughs> And hello, uh, oh yeah, hello from uh, East Coast Canada as well for PW, William Hurt. Lodge has always had a consistent diameter. Yeah, that's true. Even the oldest lodges, you know, from the early 20th century, we're talking about like the 1900s, uh, their pans will, um, yeah, the lids from today will still fit on those pans back uh, from back then. They have, they have indeed kept their sizes consistent, and that's a, another point in their favor there. Okay. I've got that lid, but not the stargazer. <laughs> well, we're at a start at least, Bookworm73. <laughs> I have a field, I, and who else? I have a Griswold uh, aluminum skillet with lid for sale. Well, that, okay, kindly, uh, we'll, uh, yeah. If you're selling it, well, again, deal, deal with other people uh, on that. 
Anyway, we've got Busta Bass again. Personally, I prefer Smithy as my high-end cast iron skillets of choice. That Stargazer is ungainly and awkward looking to me. Well, they I will say, actually, it, I mean, it is quite heavy, yes, but I do feel it's well balanced in that it does not feel awkward if you pick it up from the... Uh, Pick it up from the uh, handle here, whether you're picking it up from the here or even if you were picking up from uh, from the end. One thing about the black lock skillet, on the other hand, is that again it is actually noticeably lighter than the uh, than the stargazer. I measured this, and this is only a little more than four pounds. The black lock is, in fact, um, it weighs. I remember in the in the unboxing video, it's like maybe only about two to three ounces more than a vintage Griswold uh, number eight. So this is not a heavy pan. I did see one guy do a uh, video on the. Um, on the black lock skillet in which he actually gave it quite a, a negative review. He really had a lot of bad things to say about the handle here. He felt that the handle was too wide. He felt that his hand tended to slip from the end to, from end to end. Um, I personally have not had that problem. I mean, as you can see, I'm uh, lifting the uh, black lock uh, right now. And I'm, again, I would say one definite advantage to it is the weight. So uh, I'm not I'm not regretting that at all. Uh, the main reason why I got the black lock, not just, be, no, really not because it's a uh, fancy cast iron skillet, but the main reason I got the black lock is because of its shape in that this is actually more rounded than the stargazer. This is more like a chef skillet, and that's what I use it for in most cases, whereas on the other hand, the stargazer still has more, it does have still a, a curved bottom there are no angles there but the uh, but the uh, sides are a little more straight than the uh, uh, than the black lock so okay the black lock handle looks fragile um, does it stay cooler actually yes it does I measured that uh, so it does indeed stay cooler um, it's not exactly fair to say that in this instance because again I'm heating up both of these pans gradually for a long time now it's been almost half an hour in fact so these pans are definitely heated through and through um, I did I will not say that it's fragile. I mean, after all, it's cast iron. There's really, I'm not worried at all about that any more than I would, say, uh, with a vintage Griswold. It definitely has a much thinner, um, as you can see, the walls on the uh, black lock are much thinner, and that was done especially for the, um, especially to uh, conserve on the weight there. So, uh, I mean, as far as weight is concerned, it's really a question of whether you want a light cast iron pan or a heavy cast iron pan. With this long handle and everything, this black log here, I'm sorry, this stargazer here still feels like it would weigh less than a modern day lodge skillet. So that's also doing pretty good. But hey, enough talking, or actually I'll keep talking. But let's actually do something fun and do some cooking, shall we? We're going to start off caramelizing some onions here because that should make a nice non-stick test. And it's also the first step here. Oh, by the way, we're making burgers tonight. So my challenge, of course, is to uh, fairly cook in two separate skillets at the same time. So wish me luck there. Anyway, um, I okay, I better uh, talk about the elephant in the room. This is the thing that everybody bashes Lodge for, and all I ever hear about when people comment on the black lock skillet. And that, of course, is the uh, rougher surface. Now, I have not had a problem from the beginning with the uh, surface of Lodge cast iron pans, and I still don't. Uh, yes, the black lock does not have a polished smooth surface the way, well, really all of the other designer cast iron pans do. And this was done intentionally by Lodge. Lodge has a very strong reason for why they uh, make their uh, skillets even today with the, uh, rough can with the uh, rougher surface. And that has been explained uh, quite a few times. Uh, nonetheless... I'll be very brief about it. It's not like I'm trying to defend it. I guess I'm really just stating it in that, yes, Lodge does smooth the surface of their pans. They do not just simply leave it uh, unpolished, 
from uh, after casting there. Um, if you compare any lodge pan, but especially this black lock, to what you might, might get um, to what you might get from a uh, modern day Asian cast iron pan, for instance, you will feel a considerable difference. Run your fingers over an Asian modern day Asian pan, you'll feel the sandpaper like surface, and you do not get that from the lodge black lock or any other lodge pan. And as you can see as well, there is really no problem with uh, sticking on the uh, on the uh, black lock skillet uh, any more than there is any problem with sticking on the stargazer. If there is anything sticking, it's only because I'm not doing the best job here um, <laughs> stirring both of these at the same time. But I'm working on it. Um, there we go. While we're at it. Um, as I mentioned before, nonetheless, both of these pans did have something of a seasoning problem. As I said before, the uh, Stargazer seasoning did tend to burn off pretty quickly. After only a few tries, I was already looking at the seasoning really being practically burned off, especially on the bottom. And yet, I can really say the same thing happened about the Black Lock skillet. And that's interesting in itself because Lodge is pushing its so-called triple seasoning on the Black Lock skillet. Lodge is very proud of its seasoning process, which, as you know, saved the company from bankruptcy. I really, I think I got to turn the heat down on this one. In fact, it does look like it's starting to uh, char it, and that's not what I want. <laughs> So there you go. There's no problem, as you can see, with this thin cast iron heating up very well. So I've just turned the heat down here, as well as uh, on the black lock. Of course, it might be the uh, burner, too. Even so, uh, yes, as I said, the uh, tr so-called triple seasoning on the uh, lodge black lock, it did, in fact, come off fairly quickly. I would say maybe after a month or so, I was already looking at the point where the seasoning was... Uh, what had worn down or or burned or yeah worn off to the point where I was starting to see little bits of flash rust, unfortunately. And so for both of these at different times, I did take the time to re-season them myself. I re-seasoned the Black Lock skillet once, and uh, it has held on to its seasoning nicely for uh, almost two years. Uh, the Stargazer skillet. I think I re-seasoned re it, and it was nice, but I had to re-season it again. And then I re-seasoned it a third time only about a month or so ago. However, it has been working on nicely since then, and I'm not seeing any indication that the seasoning is coming off now. So I would say it is, finally, after more than a year, starting to build on a uh, good patina. I'm definitely going to watch what I'm doing with these onions here. In fact, I'm already thinking, the w with the way this is going, I think I better throw a little oil in this pan quickly. Give me one second. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now I just got to be careful I don't burn these things before they caramelize. Anyway, as I mentioned, um, yeah, I did have to re-season both of these pans. Nonetheless, I'm, as I said, despite all this, I'm still not complaining, not even about the uh, Stargazer, because the Stargazer has given what it really uh, promised, and that, of course, is a smooth glass-like surface. I mean, you can see these onions are really just sliding across the pan with no resistance whatsoever. The um, They're also sliding very nicely on the black lock skillet. I, I think it must be the burner must have heated this thing up too high, or it could even be the fact that this was, in fact, again, much thinner cast iron, so it may very well have heated up more quickly. That's actually something to consider then if, you, if you're looking into a thin, lighter cast iron pan in that I definitely have to keep this going now because I do not want these things to burn. They're definitely getting charred, unfortunately. Well, all I can do is keep working on it. 
However, I'd say we're doing not too badly nonetheless. Meanwhile, here, this is uh, approaching uh, caramelizing uh, much more easily. Of course, I don't, I don't know many people who might complain and say, oh dear, this cast iron pan is getting too hot. <laughs> Even so, it's also giving it nice coating of grease here. I really hope you're not hearing that stupid background noise. In this neighborhood, we get that a lot. People who just decide to blast their music as they're driving slowly down the street. Oh, good. It seems to have stopped. Anyway, once we get this done, as I mentioned, we are going to start looking into some burgers. So in the, in the Stargazer here, it is uh, caramelizing nicely, in fact. And I've just got to keep my, just got to watch myself with the uh, black lock. I'm, oh, yeah, I do think it is actually started to, uh, the temperature has dropped a little bit in the black lock. Oh, good grief. Anyway, temperature has dropped a little bit in the black lock here. And I can only hope that uh, we manage to end up with some caramelized onions. I really hope that stupid music doesn't, ha doesn't happen this whole time tonight. Okay, what do we have here? Meanwhile, uh, okay, GP. If I had one choice, it would be solid Technics, OS Ion, and uh, US Ion. On the other hand, we've got uh, Master of Play. Which one? Which one do you like more? Stargazer is more expensive, I think. Well, that is actually true, and that is a point that uh, really needs to be brought up in regards to these uh, new designer cast iron pans. The, uh, you know, on Stargazer's website, they do sell, yeah, this is really getting, uh, you know, in fact, I think I'm even going to turn this down. Boy, this thing is uh, doing a job on these onions. As I said, it might just be because of my poor, you know, attempt at uh, doing two at the same time. And yet, why isn't it happening with the Stargazer? Probably the burner, actually. Anyway, yes, yeah, so on Stargazer's website, um, these, uh, the 10 inch skillet sells for $115. The, they now have a 12 inch skillet. The only other skillet that they're producing, which sells for $145. On the other hand, uh, Lodge, of course, being a, a company that has mass produced cast iron at low prices for years, has decided to give the, uh, black lock skillet a, uh, a uh, price of $60. So we're talking maybe just about half of what you would pay for the, um, bla for the uh, black clock skillet. Oh dear. This, is, this seems to be my own fault here regarding these onions. <laughs> I think I better take these out because yeah, I'm, I'm unfortunately, these onions are definitely not uh, crisping the way they should be. <laughs> so hey, yeah, that's an interesting thing to see when we're trying to compare the uh, Lodge to the um, Stargazer to the Black Log, isn't it? So, um, well, that, that's the way that's the way it goes. That's the way the cookie crumbles or the onion caramelizes. So, I'm only going to just keep on going here in the um, Stargazer skillet. <laughs> Would the, um, I'm still convinced that it's um, that really it was my burner combined with that uh, thin cast iron there for the uh, black lock. So that actually is some as I, I think I said that already. It's something to consider if you were looking into the black into the uh, black lock because sure it did heat up fast and it certainly did do a job on those onions. On the other hand, that means when we make some burgers, you can be sure it's not going to have any trouble at all there either. So. Even so, um, I have enjoyed cooking in the black lock skillet over the past uh, year and a half. I have really have been enjoyed the heck out of this pan. I'm do I do my best to rotate uh, my cast iron collection, which is why you're not seeing the uh, stargazer in every one of these videos I'm doing. On the other hand, Jamie, my roommate, uh, she actually prefers using the black lock. She likes the lighter weight of it. She likes the shape of it. And neither of us, again, have any trouble at all with the, uh, with the lighter surface. I'm sorry, the uh, rougher surface of the, uh, 
of the uh, black lock skillet. So I am not even going to uh, consider the rougher surface at all in regards to it because it has not been a problem for me. Uh, I know there are people who have really got really uh, vocally uh, blasted um, Lodge at every instance. The first chance they get uh, whenever it says, hey, let's look at our black lock skillet. Why don't you smooth it down the way you're used to? And as I said, there is a long, there is a long reason for that. Even so, it does look like these onions are starting to caramelize nicely now. Now that I've uh, mixed those other ones in with these, it looks like we're getting into some decent caramelization here. So those onions are not a loss. Even so, I'm thinking I'm going to have to uh, practice a little bit more using that black lock, don't you think? <laughs> what else do we have here? Meanwhile, as I said, bust to base. Best value is Smithy for sure. GK. <laughs> Uh, I've got, I've got both and love using both. I love, I like the black lock skillet, uh, better for eggs and stargazer more for steaks. Yes. That, that's the thing. As I mentioned, the, I think the black lock skillet makes a better chef skillet, a breakfast skillet. So, and I'm certainly not regretting using it like that. Uh, price is not bad when you consider how long it will last. There is that. I mean, that's really the reason why there is so much uh, expensive cookware out there. And really, it's not only Blacklock or even Smithy or Butterpat. I think it's Butterpat that's selling their skillets for $250, for instance. You know, twice of what you're getting choice of what the stargazer costs. Or on the other hand, the field skillet, I think, costs maybe $90 to $100. So it's in between these two. However, as I said, <clears throat> really, it's a, light, it's a lifetime investment. I guess the idea, I mean, the idea behind the whole luxury cookware market is just that. It's not just cooking. If it was just cooking, then, of course, we'd all be satisfied just simply buying our uh, cast iron from Lodge at Walmart and our, uh, you know, and our spatulas at the Dollar Tree and, of course, even uh, even cheap aluminum fry pans from, um, you know, from uh, Marshalls and Home Goods and the like. So, and yet there is, I mean, Le Creuset has been in business with its, uh, with its ultra expensive enamel cast iron for all these years. And it looks like the uh, designer cast iron pans are uh, doing well also, which the question is why? Because people like it. They like the prestige. That's really is as good a reason as any. You know, the uh, Stargazer is the type of, uh, or even the Blacklock, this is the type of thing you can get someone as a Christmas present, as a birthday, anniversary, wedding present, something really, really nice. See, because as you said, you know, look at how long it's going to last. This is likely going to last the rest of your life if, as long as you take care of it properly. So I've learned a few things about cooking, and I'm going to make sure this, these uh, pans never warp, for instance. <laughs> As such, you know, I'll still, I'm, I'm confident I will still be using the Stargazer 10, 20 years from now. I'll still be using the Blacklock 10, 20 years from now. And for that matter, I will still be using my vintage uh, Birmingham Stove and Range and my uh, every so-called everyday Lodge, uh, modern Lodge skillets 10 to 20 years from now as well. Yeah, these things are getting nicely caramelized at this point. Yeah, now I'm not really uh, complaining, I think, about the job that that the uh, Black Lock did. I mean, yes, it did char those, but they are mixing in with these uh, pretty nicely. Here, in fact, let's get a closer look and you can see for yourself. And here we go again. That's pretty good. Anyway, as I mentioned, yeah. Yeah, take a look. These things are uh, caramelizing pretty nicely. And yes, I mean, you can see a little bit of the char, but I think we did rescue those before they actually burned and blackened. So we've got some nice caramelized onions here. And that didn't take too long, did it? Which means I can start reheating the uh, black lock back up because now we're going to be able to start tearing on the heat and uh, going for step two. So... Get these caramelized onions into a bowl. Bowl. <laughs> there used to be this guy, sports uh, guy on NPR. 
Uh, he did a lot of commentary about sports, and I always loved the way he talked about bowls, the Super Bowl, and the college bowls. There we go. <sighs> So, step one, here are some caramelized onions. Let's turn the view back, if you don't mind, so that we can see both pans once again. And I am still trying to be fair here. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if this means that, you know, that, uh, the black, that the Stargazer won this battle, so to speak. But, I mean, it did a great job caramelizing those onions. There's no denying that. However, now, as I said, it's time to uh, do the next step and start preparing some burgers. And that's why I have over sitting here innocently in the corner. I did a video on this as well. This is also new from Lodge, for that matter. It is their newest cast iron grill press. And this, quite frankly, is one I think they should have done years ago. As you know, Lodge, up until now anyway, has done that rectangular grill press with the uh, hinged handle on it that uh, you know does not stay up so if you really want to press down on it it's difficult to do that uh, i like this this is nice and simple and straightforward and by the way it has a very very flat and smooth surface too believe it or not so i like this this grill press and uh one more time with the comments here um JP again. Actually, Lodge bought out Finex, and Finex is uh, smooth, so I guess you can say Lodge does make their smooth pans. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they have the advantage, of course, of the um, of the uh, manufacturing process that Finex uses, in that they uh, do smooth their pans out, and now Lodge can take care of that. Lodge probably simply does not have the capability in their new in their uh, current. Uh, factory to smooth out their pans. It would involve installing additional equipment to do it. So, <laughs> um, and let me see. We've got um, Maestro Play Seven. Uh, are you into cast iron? Are you into cast iron kettles? Oh, yes, I am. It's only that this week we are talking about uh, these two cast iron skillets. Somebody says, I hate Le Creuset. Stove is best. And I recently did uh, I recently did uh, get myself a huge stove uh, cast enamel cast iron pot, and I certainly do like that as well. And what else do we have here? Yeah, that looks like a great grill press. Yeah, I am enjoying that. I mean, really, for things like these burgers, it's this is going to be a lot of fun. I agree that I agree. I like that Lodge grill press. <laughs> Does it uh, fit on a uh, on an eight inch and above skillet? Well, uh, it does not fit exactly on the rim of an 8-inch skillet. It, As I found out, it does not quite make a perfect cover, so you cannot use it as a cover for an 8-inch skillet. On the other hand, if you were to use it on a 10-inch skillet, as you can see, there's no trouble at all there. And actually, it also works fine on the uh, Stargazer as well. So... Um, I'm not sure if that means that's more of a nine inch skillet. No, I believe I measured it. It's like about eight inches or so, like you said. <laughs> uh, rescued, hooray. I agree. But, oh, yeah. And finally, yeah, the grill press almost looks like it could be used as a lid. Yeah, as I mentioned, unfortunately, it is almost just barely, maybe a micro fraction of an inch n does not perfectly fit. Actually, let me demonstrate it rather than just trying to talk about it. Give me one second. Here is a uh, number five, eight inch lodge cast iron pan from five years ago from their 120th anniversary. And here is the lodge grill press. It's close, but not an absolutely perfect fit. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom anyway to uh, really 
grip that pan. It has a completely smooth bottom. It doesn't have any kind of a border or anything like that. And it's only just barely too big or too small to uh, fit correctly. You know, actually, let me uh, digress one more time. And I'll be right back again. Do this. Where did that thing go? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because something just occurred to me. This is a BSR number five, which BSR made their things just very, very slightly bigger than large. So let's see what happens here. As a matter of fact, no, it still does not fit perfectly. So unfortunately, no, it is not, does not quite fit. Okay, one last thing and then we'll get on with the show. Look what we have here, folks. We have a Lodge number six pan, not a number five, but a number six. This is like from the uh, 1940s to 1950s or so. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> it's actually too small. So <laughs> unfortunately, it still strikes out as a lid, I'm sorry to say. Now let's get down to having some fun here. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, it's gotta fit something. Yeah, I bet if I look maybe for like another couple of months, I might find something that it fits. <laughs> Will you buy the 12 Stargazer? Um, as I've said so many times with my other pans, really don't have a need for it. I have a 12 inch BS, oh, this is getting hot, isn't it? I have a 12 inch, actually a 12 and a half inch BSR uh, number 10 skillet. And for that matter, I also have the Finex. I have the Finex uh, number 12 skillet, which is not quite 12 inches. So in my case in particular, I simply do not have the need for it. Um, if someone does not have a 12-inch uh, skillet, of course, they can get a large 12-inch skillet for $20 at Walmart. Or, in fact, they could go the designer route and go for the uh, lot, the uh, Stargazer. There that goes again. Oh, good grief. Yeah, that's what my neighborhood is like. Anyway, they could go for the 12-inch uh, Stargazer if they, if they, uh, for a special occasion, for instance. But while we're waiting here, let me, okay, it's really time to stop talking and let's start uh, doing some prep work here because here comes the beef. And let's get some, actually, let me move over here a little bit just so that you can see that. There we go. Anyway, comes the beef. Now let's roll us out some balls. You know, I did a uh, smash burger video only a little earlier this month um, or last month because, uh, yeah, I was uh, premiering that, uh, gr that grill press, in fact. And, in fact, my patties, as I, as I found out, turned out to be too small. Uh, I followed the advice of, um, of a number of uh, videos there that said you should use a, a two-and-a-half-ounce um, patty. And I did not like that. So, um, yeah, I ended up with sliders. So instead, I'm going to go for more of a four-ounce patty. There we go. So that way, two of these will make a nice big half-pound burger. You really can't ask for better than that, can you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, all we got to do is press this out. And here's one, and we will do the other, and then it will be time to do some real cooking. Let's just put a little bit more here, and besides, I'm measuring this as well so that we can be fair in our test between the Black Lock and the, lo and the uh, Stargazer, in that we are making burgers that are exactly the same size. There we go. So here comes patty number two. There we go. 
that isn't that wasn't hard because as you know it again you don't want to need these things too much um you do want some air on the inside so there we go we've got two nice big patties which means time to be like the hulk and smash I actually now gotta dry off my hands let's check comments one last time hmm. Any update on a new apartment house? Um, unfortunately, the last couple offers kind of fell through in that I, I decided I really was not happy with them, sorry to say. I've just put in an uh, offer um, today, though, for another apartment that actually looks very promising, and it has a gas stove, too. <laughs> so, um, uh, Master yeah, Maestro plays seven, uh, but I heard stove looks better. If you if you're really into it for the presentation, well, I I can only agree there. I do like my stove. Found a 12 inch artisanal at Goodwill for eight dollars. The outside is enameled black. Huh. Going to uh, going to strip and season. Well, I'm not sure how you can strip an enamel pan unless you have it sandblasted. So, uh, MP7 is returning to modern day cast iron pans. Yes, exactly. Let's get going. Let's get going here. And now. There we go. It's time at last to do some cooking. Ready? Here we go. And here is the thing with... And here comes the large grill press. Push it down nice and hard. <laughs> and now comes number two. <clears throat> Boy, this one really is smoking. It's got to be my... It's got to be the, the uh, burner more than anything else. I apologize for that, folks. The thing with smash burgers is, of course, you know, we actually have to cook them until they're like about 90% done on one side. Um, that's different from your typical patty where you uh, flip it as soon as it seems to uh, be done up around and just beginning to creep over the edge. Even so, that wasn't so difficult. Um, well, okay, let's stop talking and start seasoning, shall we? Some salt. Let's also turn up the pan here. Excuse me one second. The door is opening. Good. the burgers. What? Yes. Okay, now a little bit of pepper. What? Okay. And with that, now after it's uh, ready, we are going to have to scrape it off the pan. You went this way. No, I said put the pan, then we'll go everything out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. All right, first. This alarm's going to start going off any second. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, you're right. I better close that door. I should have closed that door quite frankly. Where do you go? Is he in here? I don't know where he is. <laughs> more, more chaos, of course. Yeah, thanks to our uh, lovely little cat here. Right here. Yes, Great indeed. Wow. Okay. Do you want to see what he's cooking? I Can use coffee filters to do. Um, Okay, one quick, one quick. I'm not putting them near the stove. You're near no, mine. I, no, I realize. Oh, yeah. not me. Not me. Not me. Oh, okay, then we can't do it. Sorry, he, sorry, he's gonna have to go another yeah. time. Sorry. He's fresh. So okay. Fresh. So the kidneys are fresh. All right. <coughs> so fresh kidneys. Yeah, the hot, thick so, color. On the 12 I inch. Okay. Check the temperature on that skillet. It looks hot. Yeah, tell me about it. I've actually turned the uh, temperature down a little bit. 
And at this point, if I notice here, we are starting to uh, get little spots here on the top that are uh, getting to be well done, and the uh, liquid is starting to pool on the top. So I think we're getting close to it. I'm going to give it just a, another few seconds, and then we're going to try to scrape this up. Guys, pretty sure you know. Probably share my yeah. Yeah. Somebody asks, "Is that the same?" Ah! Sorry. Somebody asks, "Is that the same cat that walks all over your skillets?" And the answer is, "Yes, it is." The same cat that walks all over him. Yeah, it's the same cat all that walks over, over me. Yeah, yeah. All over him. Oh yeah. Here we go. Believe me, folks, we did indeed try to uh, keep him from jumping all over the cabinets. And it didn't work because he did it every second as our back was, backs were turned. No, no, no. Our backs didn't have to be turned. You put it down the ground and you jump right back up whether you were sitting there or not. Uh-oh. Not... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this thing... There it goes. There we go. A little difficult, but I got it. It's stuck. My bad. Wow. Oh, oh dear. I told you about what? What did you tell me about what? Okay, okay. And likewise on the... There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, dear. I'm afraid it actually looked like they both kind of stuck. I think that's my own fault, I'm sorry to say. What, hold on. What happened? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Why am I looking at the settings of this video here? Hold on. Are we still live? I think we're still live. Okay. Yeah. Well, burgers were looking great, I'm afraid. This one, I'm afraid, kind of fell apart. I think it's my fault for using this kind of beef, unfortunately. What is going on here? Hold on, hold on. All of a sudden, my PC is going haywire here. What is going on here? Why am I seeing Windows notifications? Hold on. Uh, sorry, folks. Something else is happening. It's not... No, no. Yes, among other things. Uh, we are still live, but now, look, I'm doing nothing and poof. What's going on here? We go right there. Hold on. I think I know what happened. Yeah, I'm right there. Right here. I think I know what happened. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Looks like I had a mouse malfunction. I mean, my computer mouse well, had a mouse malfunction. Okay, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, you're right. Off that and just on at oh, damn it. I even forgot to put the cheese on. Oh, this did not turn out well. <laughs> okay, right. well, we're going to have to try again. Oh. Pretty much, yeah. Hey Sorry guys. about that. You call Mulligan? I call Mulligan. Yeah. Mulligan. Sounds good. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, these, we're going to have to actually make another attempt at this. My yeah, apologies, folks. Little... I'm very hey, embarrassed guys. about this. Why? Yeah, this. Yeah, uh... yeah. okay, okay. There we go. Hmm. Okay. I'll put more of that right here. Sorry about that, folks. Yet again, more chaos kind of in came up and interrupted everything. So, all I can do is try again. We will get these things right eventually. As you can see, as I say almost every week, I am not a professional, and I think this demonstrates it all too well. Even so, look at this, by the way. Even though it kind of burned, it and, oh, good grief, now the neighbors, too. Anyway, even though it kind of burnt, there's still no trouble at all removing the uh, burnt bits. Professional. <laughs> yeah, let's call it that. Professional. Okay, all, all right. we can do is try again. Here, can I have burgers? What? Oh, oh, these? Yeah. Yeah, here, help yourself. Thanks. Okay. Well, all we can do is try again. If at first you don't succeed, it's so dry. Pretty much, yes. If at first you don't succeed. Okay, let's get this right, shall we? 
you pack it really, really tight. Really yeah, really that's tight. that's exactly what I'm trying to do this okay. time. So, okay. I might want to add a little bit of oil to the pan because there's not much uh, in the burger. What? I don't remember what. Um, I don't remember what um, back consistency of burger was. Okay. All right. Nonetheless, yeah, this this seems to happen every week, folks, and I apologize. But I guess, as somebody said, that's why I call this channel Cast Iron Chaos. Something does seem to happen here. And that's what we get when we try to cook live and not everything scripted and everything done perfectly. So there's one. This time I'm going to make sure we do this thing right. Oh, this kind of shows people that we don't do a trial run either. Well, yeah, there is that, and we probably should. No. Although the trial runs can be kind of expensive in their own. That doesn't make it authentic, though. You know? Well, there is that. Like, to perfect something before you go on, you know? Right. Okay, so, there we go. This time, I'm, this time I'm doing a nice, yeah, as you, as you said, I'm squeezing this patty, getting this thing nice and solid this that time. Meat? Yes, indeed. Beat my meat. So. Squeeze, it. Squeeze it. There we go. This time, I'm thinking it's going to be a little better. In fact, I'm even going to kind of cheat a little bit and quickly run this through a paper towel just to dry up a little bit of the moisture, but only a little bit. I'm pretty sure it was 80-20. Okay, all we can do is try again, folks. So, okay, let's see what happens. One and two. Okay. There you go. Push it down nicely. Yeah. And now let's get to. Oh, that is hot. Let's get to the other one. There we go. If nothing else, this is also turning into a nice demonstration of the log cast iron grill press, folks, which I only paid fifteen dollars for at uh, Target. There we go. That's number two. Ooh, man, that's hot. Okay. Let's see if we can find a way. There we go. <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right. Yes, lower the temperature. Yeah. All right, I've lowered the temperature. Yeah, definitely it was the burner here. Uh, I've already turned the burner down on the uh, black lock down to about three, whereas on the uh, stargazer it's about four. Okay, finally. Yeah. It's the entertainment value I come for. Well, thank you very much, Brian Smith. I mean, what, what can I do? I mean, I really can't say, oh, damn, I goofed it. Well, I did, admittedly, but as they also say, the show must go on. It's kind of like, a, you know, I meant to do that. You know, I'm a, I'm a street performer. This is all done intentionally, every bit of it. I come for the snacks. Terry Sinchef, you're late again. Well, you're still, well, we're still here, as you can see, and we're at the good part now. So, I always spray my pans down with pan before cooking. It works great. Pan down. Yeah. What paper are you using to mash the burgers? I'm just using parchment paper, nice and simple, you know, cooking parchment paper, easily available at the supermarket next to the tin foil. Um, chaos indeed. Just want to put more oil or butter in the pan. By the way, once again, I forgot. I've got to stop talking and season a little bit. Where did I put that salt this time? Uh, just, oh, wow. had, just had the salt. Oh. Oh, somebody borrowed it. Okay. Here we are. Salt. Salt. Trouble oh, hello, trouble maker. Yeah, that's it. It's Trouble's fault. He stole the salt shaker. Yeah. A little bit of pepper. Reach over here. A little bit of pepper. Okay. This time it looks like it's going to work out better. Usually the second time does. Hopefully that will still be the case here. By the way, I better start getting my buns ready. I forgot to toast the buns in advance. What a shame. Ah, oh, did it again. Oh, well. 
always forget something. And yeah, as you said, it, I mean, again, this that's what we get for trying to cook live. And that's why those other uh, cast iron uh, channels, they uh, generally don't do live cooking. Or if they do, they're obviously much more professional about it than I am. Nonetheless... That's what makes it fun doing a live show. Oh, absolutely. You're not going to see this in a scripted. Hmm. Trouble the scapegoat. Okay. Um, modern cast iron, by the way. The, nonetheless, regardless of all this, as I said, the burner did tend to heat this black lock up hotter than the stargazer. That's almost definite. In fact, you could see the smoke coming off of it even now. But hey, again, even though it's thin cast iron, there's really no problem at all. Uh, as you can see, with heating this up to uh, do a nice burger, and even here in the uh, Stargazer, we're also uh, not having any trouble here in this time. <laughs> can only see what happens this time when it's time to uh, flip them. Here's hoping that it uh, turns out better. Well, all we can do is find out. <laughs> By the way, Jamie took those other burgers and wrapped them up in a tortilla. So uh, they did not go to waste. And I hope they turned out okay nonetheless. Okay, the other thing i got to remember to do... Hey, I actually am remembering it in advance this time. Namely, you can't forget the cheese. Because, after all, this is America. And there's one thing you do in America, and that's drown it in cheese. And it, we're already running into an hour here, so in a way, I'm glad I did not do bacon for this, because then this really would have lasted a long time. Nonetheless, there we go. Cheese is ready, and I'd say we're about ready to flip these things now anyway. So, try number two. Let's see what happens. Aha! There we go. Now that's more like it. Oh, yeah. Now we are getting somewhere. Yay, success. <laughs> Thank you again for putting up with all this, folks. But here comes the results. Here comes the cheese. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> top three in U top three YouTube royalties. Well, that would be nice. So, I mean, I definitely do not make enough from this to uh, retire from my full-time job, unfortunately. A number of channels have dedicated themselves to making this their full-time job, and that's one reason why they can produce those professional quality videos at much higher... Uh, Budgets in much better, um, you know, quality and quantity than I can. I've said from the beginning that my uh, thing is a hobby. And by the way, stop talking and cover the pans. Here's one. And here's the other. On the other hand, as I said, especially because it's a hobby, I enjoy it. And even though it's a hobby, I'm still uh, considering... You know, it might not be a bad idea, I suppose. It's been suggested a couple of times that I maybe accept a couple of those offers to do some more unboxing reviews. I did see an email in my uh, inbox uh, maybe a couple of months ago that I, at that time I decided not to uh, respond to. This was from a company calling themselves Foreverware. And they are producing what appears to be a uh, what they call a stainless cast iron skillet. I took a closer look at it, and it's not a uh, stainless steel coated cast iron skillet. Apparently, it's a uh, cast iron that's not exactly pure cast iron. Rather, they do a mixture or an alloy to, so that they produce a thick and heavy steel skillet with the smoothness and sheen of uh, stainless steel that apparently you can uh, cook with it. You can you don't have to season it. You can put it through the dishwasher and everything. There have been a couple of... Uh, unboxing videos of that already. However, there's one thing. The nine inch skillet that that company sells costs $125. That's nine inch. <laughs> so who knows? 
But anyway, why not start a Patreon? Well, if, assuming it's assuming I could get anybody for that. Regardless, okay, that did not take long. There was there we go. Now this time we've got ourselves a boiger. And let me lift this. Oh yeah. <laughs> So let's get this out. And among other things, I didn't even toast the bun. That's how bad I'm off, how bad I've done this tonight. However, here we are. There's one. This one has a little bit of cheese stuck to the pan. However, and here's two. So there we are. Thank you very much for your patience, folks. We have your basic burgers. I didn't even have the chance to toast the buns. But, you know what? Okay, let's turn down that black lock again. Ugh. Let's throw these on. How about that? There we go. What does that cover go to? Um, let's take a look. Now this, um, as I mentioned earlier today, this is actually a lodge, oops, this is gonna drip. This is actually a lodge cast iron, yes, it's dripping, a lodge cast iron skillet cover that they, that they use with their double Dutch oven. It doubles, of course, as an actual skillet or even a pie plate. Um, they do sell these things separately too. It's a 10 inch and it fits on the large 10 inch skillet. Ouch. And before I talk anymore, I better take this bun off because, oops, well, maybe not. Okay, it doesn't look quite toasted yet. This, on the other hand, oh, this is hot. Boy, looks like I better get that glove again. Where did I put that? <laughs> This, on the other hand, is an aluminum cover to a Wagner Ware Magnolite aluminum Dutch oven, and that fits perfectly by coincidence on the Stargazer skillet. I was very happy to discover that. Okay, I think these things are definitely done now. So, there we go. Put this on. And we've got ourselves some basic burgers. I even have pickles here to put on, which I should probably do anyway. Move this over here at least. Actually, let's get a view, more of a view here. There we go. Oops, too late. Well, maybe not too late. Because, of course, if you've got burgers, you've got to have some hamburger uh, pickles on them. That's pretty much a given here. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to put mustard and ketchup on these. I, I like the taste of my meat. And there we go, at least, thanks to everybody's patience, we do indeed have a couple of burgers. So, of course, last thing to do now is chow down. I really wish I could get American pickles. <laughs> in Scandinavia, they put too much uh, sugar in them. Uh, I would honestly say, let me turn off this as well. I would honestly say then the best thing to do would actually be to consider making your own pickles. That's actually very easy. Excuse me for a moment. I think I'm going to try chowing on one of these and see how it tastes. Mm-hmm. 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 Nicely done on the inside. I am... Not a fan of pink in my burgers. This is what I consider to be pretty much a perfectly uh, done burger. In that it's probably just barely well done on the inside. 
This is how I've had burgers my whole life, and this is how I like them. I love medium rare steak. Do not ever want another well done steak, but for a burger, this well done is mm. mm hmm. That is good. Mm. Mm. Why would anyone eat raw minced meat? Yeah, that's about right. So that is uh, my sentiments as well. So I don't think really there's much of a chance these days with processed foods and everything um, that there would be a contamination from raw ground beef. But nonetheless, there is still that risk. And so despite all of those gourmet burgers they talk about and see in those other videos where you've got pink on the inside. I much prefer my burgers uh, with no pink. That's why this is a nice and simple burger here, and I'm actually quite pleased with it. Despite all the chaos that happened, <laughs> and I do have some more ground beef. I could always make some more burgers once the video is over. Nonetheless, uh, I'm talking about taste and texture. I don't find it pleasant, okay? Oh, yes, about the, uh, yeah, I know. Um, that's also, I think, really an acquired taste, and it's for me, too. I've been eating these well-done burgers my whole life, and I do find a, a, a medium-rare burger with pink on the inside to be undercooked. I agree. It does not sound like, um, it does not, it's not something that uh, I've, uh, done a lot and it does taste and feel strange that way love it on a steak do not love it on a burger but having said that well what can i say you know i mean as i mentioned already what we're looking at here is the stargazer cast iron skillet and the and the lodge blacklock cast iron skillet now of course you know again Stargazer is basing the future of their company, their survival on the success of this cast iron skillet. Lodge, on the other hand, produced the Blacklock skillet really as a way to compete with the uh, designer cast iron skillets, such as the Stargazer. I mean, there's really no way you cannot think that Lodge had that in mind when they released this series. So, I mean, they have never admitted it. I love Lodge Cast Iron. I have no complaints. They are a wonderful company. I've dealt with them. I'm very, I'm very much uh, think that Lodge is a great company, but it is business competition. I mean, as you can see, there is definitely a market out there for these uh, designer, fancy, high-priced cast iron pans. And really, if Lodge did not try to respond to it, that would be a serious business mistake, which is probably also the reason why they bought out Finex as well. Um, as such, I mean, well, what can you say? You know, the Blacklock series is very, very nice, and they did put a lot of effort into its development and production. For Lodge, of course, it is just another line of uh, cast iron pans, and if it doesn't work out, they can just discontinue it and continue going on with their uh, business. And by the way, here's a hint. Has anybody seen yet the uh, 2021 Lodge Legacy re-release? You know how for the past three years they've been doing a re-release, or is it four years in fact, of uh, their uh, of their vintage cast iron pans that they had taken out of production. The most famously was the bunt pan or the fluted cake pan. The next year there was the uh, Lodge Fish Fryer. The year after that, that was last year I believe, that was their breakfast skillet which, uh, you know, actually did not receive much of reception. And this year, I have not yet seen or heard anything about the next Lodge Legacy series. So for all we know, maybe they might have discontinued that line. And that's why I brought that up. I mean, Lodge, of course, you know, they're doing whatever uh, makes a profit because they are a business, and I don't have any complaints about that. Um so you have to consider as well the intent in that Lodge produced the, bla the Black Lock pretty much like any company would, especially to compete with the uh, competition. Stargazer really is something of a labor of love. And you could say that really about all of the other designer skillets that have come out, whether it's Feel or Smithy or Butterpat. All of those, they're really, they are really putting a big effort and even Finex, which yes is part of Lodge, but they all put a they put their heart and soul into these things. They invested huge amounts of money. Yes, they did do crowdfunding, but they put a lot of their own capital uh on the line as well. 
And as such, you know, they took a big risk in producing these and they did it because they wanted to. For that in itself is a good reason to support these companies. And so I'm not saying that if you feel, I mean, really what it comes down to, of course, is that if you feel you have a need for these high priced pans, whether it's the Blacklock or the Stargazer or the Finax or the Butterpad or the Smithy or the Field, um, if you feel you have a need for it, is it a decent investment? You know, I would say yes. Maybe it's just because I'm spoiled and I do have a nice, decent cast iron collection myself. But I think it's like if the opportunity comes up, let's say it that way. If, say, for instance, you have enough of a uh, budget where you could actually splurge on one of these things. Or, again, consider as a uh, present. Christmas, birthday, wedding, anniversary, anything like that. You know, get something really, really nice that will last forever. Um, I would still say, yes, these kind of pans are something of a nice investment. There is no denying that these are luxury pans, no matter how you look at them, because these things cook wonderful. There's really no denying it. You know, the, the chaos that happened tonight was my fault. Trouble's fault. You know, it's all trouble's fault. But no, it was my fault, and I fully admit it. Of course, this is cooking. It's not like I've, I've put my, it's not like I burned down the house or anything, but yeah, that's what I mean. It's like these things still cook great and so do discount and a cheap cast iron pans, whether it's a lodge from uh, Walmart or even the Walmart brand, the Ozark Trail or the Family Dollar Skillets. If that's what you have and if that's what you enjoy using, please go ahead and use them. They're all, they're all great cookers in the kitchen. And really, I mean, some people are really trying to make excuses. As I said, Lodge has some bashers. Why does Lodge produce such an expensive skillet in the black lock and they still don't polish it down? Because they've got their reasons for it. Likewise, um, oh, the Stargazer here, I mean, it's a, such an awful design to it. You know, it's too heavy, and this pen, and this handle is awkward. And how, and how can you say that it's worth it when you just said that the seasoning burned off and you've got to season it yourself? Well, that's how it turned out. The end result is it's still a great cooker, and I have not do not have any complaints about uh, how either of these pans have cooked. And that's why I'm still enjoying the Blacklock skillet, and I'm going to continue using it. As I mentioned, it makes a great chef skillet for breakfasts. And I enjoy the, the Stargazer skillet, and indeed, I've got, uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll say it once. You know, I've got a bit of a personal, uh, something about this appeal to me as well. I mean, and that would have to do with um, this little thing up here underneath. I've, I've got to be careful of the grease or this little star design underneath, because, you know, I'm sure you've seen in my videos that somebody's wearing a necklace, and somebody uh, has said a lot about that design. But that was just me personally. I'm not saying that's going to be a selling point for everyone. Okay. <laughs> Brian Smith, where are the, oh, where are the onions? Oh, my good grief. Yeah, I did it again. Yeah, you're right. I forgot to put the onions on these things. I made caramelized onions and forgot to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I fully admit, I'm a, I'm, as you can see, I'm a dweeb. I'm, I goofed. Well, I'll just have to eat those caramelized onions. What a shame. Hmm. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> nice job. Well, thank you very much. And they are smash burgers, at least with the second attempt. Those things, these burgers turned out very good, and I'm enjoying those as well. Love fried onions on my burger. Yeah, I am I goofed and I should have put the caramelized onions on them. But, you know, I can always make another couple of burgers and I will not forget. I Okay, here is my honest reason why. I'm concentrating on doing this live video and it's kind of like giving me tunnel vision. And so as a result, I'm becoming forgetful about things like that. I have to be reminded of things like you know, toasting the buns in advance or putting caramelized onions on them because it's like I'm concentrating on the moment. So maybe it's an excuse, but I'm calling it a genuine explanation for what, for why that happened. So I'm not going to deny that. Feel free to, uh, you know, feel free to come at me for that, you know, because it's an honest mistake on my part. I will certainly say so. Meanwhile, <laughs> Pegtooth, could the uh, Blacklock here also 
have gotten better. Okay. Oh, gotten hotter. Not not stove element. Um, maybe stronger because it doesn't get used as much. Well, I'm not so sure about that because really the seasoning on a uh, cast iron pan is is a very very thin coating and it's really not enough I think to affect it getting hotter or not. What probably did affect it more was not just the burner. I do feel it was the burner, but also that again it's thinner and lighter and it than the uh, stargazer and it did pass the uh, heat through faster, I think, and that's probably why it uh, actually did get hotter for that reason, a combination of a lighter pan and the uh, thin walls. If I had started this video with these pans in the opposite, with the uh, black lock on this side and the, and the uh, stargazer on that side, well, the results may have been different. But even so, yeah, make some mushrooms to go with them. What I'm going to need is a coach, uh, really. It's like next time I'm definitely going to ask for uh, Jamie's advice while I'm doing a burger on these live videos, you know, because at least she's here to remind me to uh, stay on the agenda. I, I will say that. However, again, let's get down, as I said, let's get down really to uh, what we came for, which, as I said already, this is the black, I'm sorry, this is the Stargazer skillet, which I really enjoy and I do not regret. As I said, I like the design of it. It is definitely heavy. Yes, there's no question about that. I think the, I think it is, the weight is well distributed. It does not feel lopsided or awkward. And uh, I quite enjoy the design of this pan. And as I said, it is a great cooker. I enjoy the uh, star. I enjoy the black lock skillet. Yeah, I feel it is very. I mean, you know, it's definitely lighter. As I said already, it makes a nice breakfast skillet, and you saw already that it heats up uh, faster as well, and and cools off faster too. And despite some complaints about the handle, I do not have any complaints about the handle here on the black lock. It feels different from the stargazer. It is different, and I'm enjoying it just because of what it is. As I said, I got it as a chef skillet, and I think it makes a good chef skillet. As I said before, the rougher surface means nothing, quite frankly. I enjoy this. I enjoy I'm and it cooks fine. I have no problems at all cooking it, despite the fact that it has a so-called rougher surface. I'll get more into that in another time as well, I think. That's probably especially the whole grinding thing. I think we've got to do a uh, video on that at some point very soon. Nonetheless, this is, uh, so as far as Stargazer versus Blacklock is concerned, well, no, I cannot say that either is uh, a winner or loser. I mean, after all, the Stargazer chart, you know, the Stargazer caramelized those onions. The uh, Blacklock charred those onions, which I already explained why that happened. <laughs> if you had better heating and better temperature control, you would definitely get some caramelized onions there as well. So, <laughs> um they both cook a great burger. There's no denying that. Um, and really, as I said, what it really comes down to is that they're both good for cooking. And I would probably say that even if I did have the field or even if I took out my fine X and compared it to these two. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the, uh, thank you for the uh, streams. Well, well, thank you very much. Um, Serratus, uh, thank you very much for the nice words there, and it's good. To, yeah, it's good to see. Oh yeah, that your wrist is healed. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. My wrist is uh, doing much better. I mean, from the fact that I'm able to lift these pans and move them around with no difficulty at all. So, so thank you very much for mentioning that. So yeah, and uh, Terry Sinchef, yeah, definitely. As I said, I need. I really should have had an agenda and a coach here tonight to help uh, keep me uh, you know, on track, and we probably would not have had the uh, little mayhem that we had. And William Hurt, <laughs> it's easy to uh, just sit and laugh, but I think, well, you know, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's easy to sit and laugh because you guys are on the other side of the camera, and I'm the one here trying to perform for you. Oh, well. This is live. I fully, I've, I've said this before. I admit that. I've said enough times that I'm not a professional. 
the most important thing though is that I am indeed having fun doing this. I mean, I've and I do end up all saying this with all these videos because it's true. The I've enjoyed these live videos here largely because of you folks, because of you folks ch uh, chipping in and chatting and commenting and knowing that uh, as I'm doing all this, as I'm burning these burgers and the cat is escaping and all that, you folks are uh, enjoying it. That's really what I like. I, it's a lot of fun to do this for you folks and I'm and I honestly mean that I'm not just saying that so uh, I love cooking in my cast iron and and Andrew Bonificio yeah that's really what it comes down to I enjoy cooking in my cast iron so people feel good about uh, supporting the content they enjoy well thank you again for that everyone and I guess that really pretty much wraps it up because you know uh, as I said, I've, I've done what I've uh, what we we've done what we set out to do. We took a look, another look at the uh, stargazer and the black clock. We I like them both. I have no complaints. Well, no, I've I've got a couple of little complaints. Yes, but they're great cast iron pans. I think both of them are. I very much enjoy using them. I have no intention of getting rid rid of either of these. I'm going to keep using them, and they're only going to keep be getting better. And I still hope this inspires folks, if not necessarily to go out and purchase something like this, but to just you know, have fun cooking in cast iron, your cast iron, whatever whatever you use and whatever you enjoy. And having said that, as like uh, Fluffy Otter here says, another fun night. Thank you and good night, everyone. That's really what we can come down to. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And as I can also say again, see you next Wednesday.